Hello, my name is Patricia Morales Bueno. I am a professor at Pontificia Universidad Católica del Perú, and I'm going to present the work Problem Solving Skills, Some Post-Pandemic Effects, which is shared with Professor Rosario Santos Rodas. For several decades, university education has recognized the need to direct its pedagogical models towards the training of professionals who have the capacity to face problematic situations, both within their discipline and in interdisciplinary spaces, in an efficient, creative, and innovative manner. And therefore, it is essential to promote the development of skills for solving complex problems. Multiple theoretical frameworks for problem-solving skills have been reported from different conceptions of learning. However, the most addressed proposals come from cognitive or sociocultural science or information processing. Components shared by the different proposed models can be identified, which include the specific domain knowledge that the subject that solves problems must have and which involves factual, conceptual, and procedural knowledge. A second component is heuristic, or the use of general strategies to address non-routine or familiar problems. Self-regulation and control skills are also part of the components considered in problem-solving models, as well as belief systems and effect. These components are incorporated into a model proposed by Sagru, in which critical variables of the problem-solving process are considered and that can be improved through educational intervention. The model assumes that the ability to solve problems in a particular domain results from the complex interaction of three cognitive constructs, knowledge structure, cognitive functions, and beliefs. The knowledge structure construct of the Sogru model defines three levels, the first two related to the identification of concepts and the application of principles. The third level is related to the link of the concepts and principles to the conditions and procedures that can be applied when facing a new problematic situation. This level allows identifying the greatest achievement in the development of problem-solving skills. In science education, the development of problem-solving skills is essential since it is considered one of the main resources to consolidate and promote scientific knowledge. However, it is common that in pedagogical practice, the development of exercises is prioritized over problem-solving. A problem must pose a new situation, preferably open, in which different ways of solution can be considered. An exercise is a routine situation whose solution involves the application of non-procedures. In recent years, higher education had to adopt remote teaching modalities due to the health emergency. This implied the design of the strategies and resources that favor the abilities for autonomous learning of the students. When returning to the face-to-face -face modality, interest arises in evaluating possible differences in the use of problem-solving skills in the third level of the knowledge structure of the Sugru model. The purpose of this study was to compare the level of achievement in these skills of three groups of students in a general chemistry course 
at a Peruvian university. The first took the course face-to-face -face before the pandemic, the second did so during the pandemic in virtual mode, and the third in face-to-face -face mode after the pandemic. The participants in this study were three groups of first-year science and engineering students from a Peruvian university. They were enrolled in the second general chemistry course of their curriculum. Table 1 shows the demographic data of the participants. In the face-to-face -face mode, the organization of the course included a weekly class session to present the topic and activities that the student had to carry out, such as tasks in which exercises corresponding to the first two levels of SOGRU model were proposed. The evaluation considered weekly tests in which a question located in the third level of the SOGRU model was posed and that corresponded to 20% of the total score. In the virtual mode, the organization of the course included a weekly session via Zoom to present the topic. The video of this session was available for students to access when they considered it necessary. A series of learning activities and formative assessments were designed as resources for learning. The student's performance was permanently monitored by the professor and teaching assistants. The evaluation was like to face-to-face -face modality. In each weekly test, the percentage of achievement in the question posed according to the third level of subgroup model was determined. Then, the average obtained at the end of the course was calculated. To verify the differences between the groups, the analysis of variance ANOVA was used, considering as dependent variable the average obtained in the third level of knowledge structure and as independent variable the participant group. Table 2 shows the descriptive statistics for the percentage of achievement in the third level of knowledge structure of each of the participating groups. The ANOVA analysis showed significant differences between the groups. The TQB postdoc test revealed significant differences between the group three and the other two. The students in the group that showed the best performance in the use of their problem-solving skills had at least one semester of virtual work. This implied that they had opportunities to develop their skills for autonomous learning, that is, in terms of their organization to manage their learning process to a certain extent, in terms of flexibility to be able to test different solution alternatives that could be discussed with their peers and with facilitators, teacher and teaching assistants, which contributed to the development of their cognitive autonomy. It is evident that this previous experience had a positive effect on the performance shown in the return to face-to-face. -to -face. The teaching of problem-solving skills is a complex task since it involves a series of factors related to the characteristics of the students, the context in which the process takes place, the pedagogical resources used among the most important. A much discussed critical aspect is the design of the problems that students must address. This should present novel situations of interest to students so that they learn to apply their abilities to develop strategies that include procedures and concepts selected for their relevance and that allow them to build a robust and sustained solution. However, this goes hand in hand with the opportunity for students to have a certain level of autonomy in their learning process. In this study, evidence has been shown 
that the drastic change in teaching modalities adapted to a greater or lesser extent to virtuality due to the health emergency had positive effects when it promoted the development of a student's cognitive autonomy. This also contributes to the level of achievement in the application of problem-solving skills. The return to face-to-face -face modality must imply a thoughtful redesign of strategies that allow for better achievements in the formation of desirable profiles for the new professionals of the 21th century. The need for change in pedagogical models has been recognized for several years. However, the process has not occurred with the desired speed in university institutions. Perhaps the critical situation in which we have been recently can become an opportunity for reflection and positive change in our pedagogical models. Thank you.